great way to end. What a great way to end the 50 hours of worship. And uh, uh, it's been, you can feel the anointing coming through the, the uh, Zoom already. So we are, uh, we're transitioning into Shabbat. And uh, welcome. This is the Global Watch International Call. It's April 29th, 2022, 5 p.m. Jerusalem time. And this is Shabbat, our favorite hour of the week. And today's Shabbat is led by the world-renowned John and Una Gear, who have been holding down the fort in the city of David in Jerusalem for many years and are now um, uh, like the diaspora spread out amongst the nations. <laughs> <laughs> and you never quite know where John is going to be. It's a little bit like where's Waldo, but um, but he comes through with uh, with a fresh word from the Lord every time we see him. So, um, John, we love you. Let me just pray a blessing over you, and then we'll go ahead. And go. So, Father, we just thank you for John and Una. We just uh, we bless them in the name of the Lord, Father. We're so thankful for their incredible faithfulness and their obedience to you uh, over the years and that they are willing to do whatever you ask them to do. They're willing to go wherever you want them to go. They really are an incredible example for us of faithful servants. And um, Lord, you've used them strategically in the past, and we just believe that the future, you're going to use them in an even more strategic way. So we just um, declare your favor over them, that your favor surrounds them like a shield we pray for wisdom in the days ahead. We just pray for renewed strength. We pray for divine health over them and uh, that you would uh, hide them in the shelter of your wings, that no harm would come to them, no destruction near their tent. And we just declare that today and this week and the year ahead, let the joy of the Lord be their strength. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, John. <laughs> John, could I just interrupt? I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. Oh, no worries. <laughs> but I, uh, it's so good to see you. But I really feel like we need to all give a, unmute and give a clap offering to Izmir House of Prayer for their mm. Amen. They really helped us put this 50 year, 50 hours together and yep. it was their vision. So uh, we would just linked and arms with them. And this is what came up. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was a huge blessing and much revelation came from it. So um, may it well just done. pour out on you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Amen. What a privilege really to be uh, tagging along with the 50 hours of high praises and worship what a great idea <laughs> you know we've been uh, in our little quarter studying recently about the uh, weapons of warfare that god has given us which corinthians says is mighty through god pulling down strongholds pulling down the vain imaginations pulling down all those strange things that human beings think that exalt are exalted above the knowledge of who God is. So how amazing in this uh, wrapped around this time in the Muslim world where they're pressing in their night of power and exalting what they're exalting. What a great idea just to counteract all that with high praises of God on our lips and the two-edged sword of his spirit, of his truth Amen. in our hand and to pull down those strongholds to see captives set free, to see a new move of the spirit come through the Islamic world. And uh, yeah, that's what we're believing for. And that's what we're just rejoicing. So yes, thank you, Izmir House of Prayer. What a great idea. And thank you, everybody who has participated in these hours of worshiping the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, this number 50, I'm sure... Uh, it's occurred to you as an important biblical number. 50 is about uh, jubilee, isn't it? It's about setting the captives free. It's about everybody be being restored to what was previously theirs. And uh, surely that has prophetic imagery for 
what we're praying for, the move of God in the Islamic world. Uh, it's also 50. 50 is penta and has to do with penta cost, doesn't it? And that's right where we are right now on the biblical calendar. Never mind the Muslim calendar, the biblical calendar. We're in the time of counting from first fruits until the outpouring of God's spirit on Pentecost 50 days later. <laughs> so uh, we're moving towards fullness. We're moving towards divine intervention. We're moving towards a demonstration of God's power afresh in the midst of the earth. Hallelujah. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that as we proceed. Uh, but first, I want to hear from Una. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. There's mm. a shortcut to all of it, Lord, and that's uh. Yeshua. It's all in him, from him, and to him. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that as we stand in the confidence, God, in you, God, that you're the king, that you're the Lord, that you're in charge, that you're the king of the universe, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the king of Israel, the king of the nations, the king of everything. Lord, we just thank you as we stand in confidence in that, God, that you're doing all of it, God. You said to stand still and see the deliverance of our God. You said to come and be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. You be still, I'll be exalted. Our stillness exalts the Lord. Our trust, our absolute confidence in him exalts the Lord more than all the stuff that we do, I believe, that his call to us right now is, just come, come to the quietness, come to that place, that sea of glass around my throne. And so, Lord, today as we come to celebrate Shabbat, God, the great Shabbat, God, that you have provided for us here on earth, God, a resting place, God, for the people of God. We just thank you, Lord. We say yes to you. We say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Take us there right now, Lord, we ask you.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to continue here in a moment with the Izmir House of Prayer, continue in high praise. Uh, we really love these guys. You don't know them, you might want to become familiar with them, but they partner with us uh, once a week with our little House of Prayer, Una and I oversee in the city of David. And the city of David is right down in ancient Jerusalem. It's the little ridge where David captured and made into his own capital city. It's where the first uh, tent, the tabernacle of David was set up. And it's just down the hill from what's today is the Temple Mount, where all the contention is these days. But one of the things the Lord established with us in the early days was on Friday, we wanted to start our worship watches early in the morning and continue well into the afternoon. Hello. Hello, uh, Because Friday is the Muslim worship day on the Temple Mount. And so all of our neighbors, we live in an Arabic uh, community would well, come streaming past us on their way up to their prayer and we just felt it was important to lift the name of Jesus uh, well before they started lifting their other name <laughs> and to keep lifting the name of Jesus until well after they were finished and that that was our uh, way of uh, counteracting if you will what was going on in the spirit realm the whole realm of spiritual warfare. We used to be quite excited about shouting and yelling and binding and loosing and doing all kinds of dramatic things. But the Lord began to point out to us, Psalm 68 especially, it says, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. <laughs> like smoke is driven away by the wind, so Lord, you arise and blow away your enemies. So we've come to believe the best kind of spiritual warfare is just that God would arise, <laughs> that God would deal with his enemies and blow away everything else that blinds people, everything that constricts their hearts and their eyes from seeing the truth of who he is. So one of the greatest weapons I mentioned is high praise, uh, high praises of God on our lips the two-edged sword in our hand, declaring who God is. Uh, another of the greatest weapons, I think, is silence. <laughs> that comes from Psalm 46. You know it well, be still and know that I am God. But that's not the end of the sentence, actually. That's, then there's a comma or a semicolon that says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. So God says, basically, you be still and I'll be exalted. <laughs> There's the equation for success. You wait on me, sit quietly in my presence. Just be enamored with the reality of who I am. And I'll be exalted in all the earth. Amen. So praise God. That's where we're going. Thank you. This was King Z David's desire. He said, one thing have I desired. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to wait in his tabernacle. And Lord, we thank you. We echo that today. That's our desire, God. That's our desire, God. We just thank you, Lord, to empower us afresh today to choose God, to gaze upon you, God, to wait, to wait upon you, God, to be moved only by your spirit, God, to initiate, you initiate everything. We just go with you, Lord, and we just thank you. 
thank you that you're drawing us all there. I sense it, God. I just sense such a company of people on earth right now, God, who are keenly listening, God, keenly waiting, God. And I just thank you in Yeshua's name, God, that you will lead us, God. You will lead us, God. You already triumphed in this battle, God. You're already victoriously reigning in life over the earth, God. And we just thank you, God. We will stand still and we will watch you bring this about, Lord. In Yeshua's name, I pray right now, God. Thank you for the high praises of God. Thank you for the two-edged sword in our hands, God. It is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. And it's all just in you, Yeshua. Everything written is in you, Yeshua. And we just give you glory. I loved on the last watch when they were singing the high praises and going from uh, really high praises it's all you we glorify you and then just coming back to the quiet place again Yeshua Yeshua and really no matter what else we're doing when we come to that Yeshua it's all there it's all there it's all there he told me a long time ago Tell people I'm the shortcut. <laughs> you don't have to read another book or attend another seminar. Just come to me. Just come to me. You will find rest for your soul. Be yoked to me and learn of me about humility and meekness, quietness, simplicity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Yeshua. Yeshua, 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 Yeshua. Thank, Thank you. you. So as we turn our attention to the celebration of Shabbat, I want to just say a few words about this, give us some, something to think about, and then we will again worship a little bit more, and then we'll take our communion together. So I'd just like, if you're interested, to turn to Leviticus chapter 23. Just share a couple of thoughts from this. This is uh, one of the main chapters where God is describing uh, the feasts, prescribing the feasts that should be observed by the children of Israel. So I'll just read from verse 1. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, the feasts of the Lord, which you will proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. Now notice they're not uh, Jewish feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord. And the rest of the chapter goes on to describe the seven main uh, cyclical feasts of the year, centered around three main feasts being Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. Now, some of you, maybe as we are, we're learning to uh, set our lives according to the tempo of God's calendar. So each year we're trying to uh, track with the feasts and the time of year and the meaning and the uh, beautiful revelation that comes with each of the feasts and seeing more of who God is in each of these feasts and always more about the redemption story the coming of the Messiah, the price that would be paid for our redemption and our fullness. So we've just gone through the time of Passover and unleavened bread and first fruits. Those are the first three spring feasts. And uh, yeah, just had a very rich time of seeing uh, the fulfillment of each of those things in Jesus. The drama of the Passover lamb and the blood that's shed for uh, the freedom or uh, release of the captives from bondage, that Jesus is our Passover lamb. 
And uh, as we put the blood of the lamb on our doorpost, then death will pass over us and we're on our way out of bondage into freedom. You've seen how Jesus is the fulfillment of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Leaven, in this context, speaks of sin. We want to have a life without sin. And Jesus is the fulfillment of that. He and he alone was the life lived without any sin, without any leaven in it. So he, in that way, becomes the fulfillment of that feast on leavened bread. And then on to first fruits, which is a, a wave offering of, of harvest to come the first fruits of what will be a full harvest down the way. And Jesus himself rose from the dead to offer himself as the first fruits offering unto God. He's the first of a multitude of harvest to come in, of people who are dead and are alive again. So there's quite a lot to say about all that, but that's not our intention here. Uh, just to say from from there, there's so much richness that the communion we're going to be taking here in a moment that we see in the Shabbat ceremony uh, is fully explained in the context of the Passover dinner, the Seder. At the key moments, Jesus takes a particular cup of wine and says, this is the cup of my blood shed for you. And at the particular time of the meal, he takes a specific piece of unleavened bread and says, this is my body broken for the life of the world. And so we'll look at that a little more in a moment when we do that together. Just to say, as we've mentioned before, from first fruits, now we begin a time of counting 50 days ahead until Pesach. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Pentecost, there we go, comes. And that too has its fulfillment in the New Testament. See the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the birthday of the church come. Beyond that, then we move towards tabernacles. We won't go into all that, but it's all wrapped up again with Jesus. With Jesus coming again, Jesus coming to judge, Jesus coming to tabernacle with us and live in our presence. We live with him. It's all beautifully fulfilled. Again, the story fully richly told in the feasts of the Lord. Now, you may have noticed, I did this on purpose, that I actually skipped a verse that comes before we even start to talk about those seven feasts, and that's in Leviticus 23, verse 3. And this is about the Sabbath. <laughs> Aha. God says, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You will do no work on it. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Not much described there. There are other places where it talks quite a bit more about the Sabbath. But just note that before even those important seven yearly feasts of the yearly cycle, there's this one feast, which we're to keep weekly. <laughs> Every week of the year, we are to stop, rearrange our lives to observe this Sabbath rest. Clearly, something about it is important. <laughs> Clearly, there's something that God wants to integrate deeply into the life we're living, learning to live with him, learning what it means to be risen again with him, to be alive to him again, the miracle of restoration through Jesus. And we get a chance to practice entering into that rest that he's prepared for the people of God. And I'm just going to invite you to ponder that. I know we've all heard this before. We've all gone over it before, probably heard good teachings or given good teachings. But that isn't the same as entering into the rest. That isn't the same as integrating it into the life we live, not just once a year, well, sorry, once a week, which is really a practice session, but 
pointing towards a reality that can be lived 24 seven, seven days of the week. I can live from a place of peace and settledness in who God is. A place where I'm freed from this world and its pushes and its pulls. Freed from my own emotional excitement and so forth. Free to live in a connectedness and abiding in the vine, which is a place of rest prepared for us. So again, I invite you just to ponder that as we take a little time to worship now. Uh, I hope Izmir House of Prayer, you're there. <laughs> Let me know if you are. <laughs> Ah, there we go. Praise God. <laughs> What's that? <laughs>
hallelujah. 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 You're worthy of it all, God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we need to turn our attention now to the Shabbat table, God. This uh, symbol of covenant love. Your express love towards us, God. We just walk us through this, God, that we would take upon ourselves the deeper meaning what you had for us in observing the Shabbat. As we noted again, this is the first among all the feasts. It's the one we practice every week. When the Lord designated the Sabbath day, the seventh day, it says it's the first thing that he called holy. It's the first thing that he set apart unto himself. Uh, something in time and space where he would dwell. <laughs> he would be with us in the context of a day. We believe it points towards a greater reality that Christ would come and awaken life in us again, awaken in you and me a place in time and space that is beyond time and space place of habitation for the lord don't what don't you know that you are the temple of the holy spirit that god has come to live in you so lord thank you for this reminder you've given us there is a rest prepared for the people of god there is a way to live this life that isn't dependent on me on my striving on my hustling things of my holding it together as a place that i can cease from my own labors even as you ceased from your labors god and i thank you with all my brothers and sisters we're learning we're learning about how to live in the reality of that sabbath rest lord turn now to the sabbath table uh some of the common elements. The first one is always the lighting of the candle. So if you can see, I have a candle lit here. I'm just going to light the Shabbat candle. I light this today, Lord, to declare that you are the light of the world. You declare this about yourself, Lord. You said you're the light of every man who comes into the world, God. And you even said that we are lights, God, but we cannot be lit, God, by our own understanding, by our own strivings, God. Only, Lord, in you is that light, God. And as we come to you and dwell in you, Lord, we are lights in the earth. And Lord, we just know there's a moment coming soon, God, where the groaning of all creation will be satisfied, God, by your sons and daughters on earth, being that light, God, being seen by the rest of the world. Glorious, God. Glorious in you, Lord. And we just thank you, thank you for it. We just invite that light right now into our lives afresh, God, into our families, God, our communities, our nations, God, into the body of Christ, God. In this hour, God, we just thank you. Thank you, thank you. We would shine like never before. We pray this for Israel also, for Jerusalem, God, to arise and shine, God. She can never do it through all her wonderful giftings, God. Only in Yeshua. Only in Yeshua. And we just cry out, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Thank have you. mercy. I just want to sing a little chorus we usually sing on Shabbat. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory, place, spirit, place, set our hearts on fire. 
flow, river flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So as in the sealing of any covenant, uh, this covenant includes the taking of bread and wine together. In the context of the Passover Seder, you may know there's a, a, a time when three pieces of matzah are taken and hidden in different pouches of the napkin. The center piece is broken in half and half is taken and wrapped up in a different cloth and hidden. <laughs> And then after dinner, it's retrieved and unwrapped again and brought back to life as it were. <laughs> and we would see it symbolically as a, a testimony of Jesus. His body was broken and hidden away in the tomb for three days, but then miraculously found and recovered and brought back to life. And so in the course of the meal, that piece of matzah appears again and after the meal Jesus took that bread that piece of bread and said to his disciples this is my body this is my body this is the understanding of this ritual this is my body broken for you take it and eat of it in remembrance of me and so, Lord, we do that now, God, as your disciples, 2,000 and some years later, we're still partaking of your body, Lord, broken for the life of the world. Thank you, Lord. We share it with the world, God. We take it in place, God, standing in for the world today until they all partake. It's your will that none would perish, but all would come to a saving knowledge of yourself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Also, in the course of the Passover Seder, there traditionally are four cups of wine that are imbibed. Each one has a name and a meeting. The third cup is again after the meal is taken. It's it's the cup of salvation, the cup of Redemption. Redemption. And Jesus took this third cup, the cup of redemption, and said, this is my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant, the blood of life that I share with you. Take this and drink this in remembrance of me. Thank you. Lord. And we do so now, Lord, as your yes. disciples in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When the meal finished, the Passover meal, again, it's traditional to drink a fourth cup. It's called the cup of completion, the cup of joy, the cup of fulfillment. But very meaningfully, Jesus said to his disciples, I won't drink of this fourth cup with you here in this context. I won't drink it until I drink it for real in the kingdom of heaven <laughs> when things truly are fulfilled and our joy is made full at his second coming at the sealing of the the bridal covenant and the coming of the marriage of the lamb so we have that to look forward to praise god jesus we thank you that you are in the middle of everything lord Everywhere we look, <laughs> there's yet another testimony of who you are, who you would be, who you are, and who are, you will yet be, God. 
in the midst of our drama. And so, Lord, as we again come to the Shabbat table, as we again cross over this threshold from the six days of working and the sweat of my brow, we cross over into that time of eternity, time of remembrance. I'm made in your image. I'm a child of God. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I've been remade in his in image of the one who created me. I'm my father's son, my father's daughter. And we celebrate that God again we this do. week. In we do. the name of your son, Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we belong. We belong to you. We belong to you, Abba. We've been reconciled to you by the blood of Yeshua. Such a beautiful thing. We've been reconciled to our Father by the blood of Yeshua. His life given for us. We just thank you so much. We just can't thank you enough. We say, Ho do let on he lay over our hearts. We give thanks to you, God, for your goodness, God. For your goodness forever, God. For your goodness, God. Your goodness, God. We declare it over the earth today, over the nations, over Israel. You are good, Lord, and your mercy endures forever. You never give up on. You'll never give up on us. So we just give you thanks tonight. And I just would like one more thing. Could we just look up or if you remember Psalm 24, can we declare it together? This psalm to me sums it all up. The truth is in this psalm. It's a message. The first verses are a message. The second verse is the messenger and the third verse is where is the message being addressed to and so it says the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the world and everyone who dwells in it for he has founded it upon the seas he has established it upon the waters who may ascend to the hill of the lord who may stand in his holy place. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol or sworn by what is false, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. And the message is being addressed to open up you ancient gates, swing wide you everlasting doors, that the king of glory may hey. come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Open up you ancient gates, swing wide you everlasting doors, that the king of glory may hey. come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. Hallelujah. It's great news, guys. It's great news. The earth is the Lord's and everyone in it. And we just thank you, thank you, thank you. God, thank you, Lord. That we can stand in mm -hmm. for everyone God, and give you so, praise. Thank you, thank Father. You, Lord. Man, maybe Izmir, guys, we can finish with that song again. You are worthy of it all. As they're preparing, Lord, we do just proclaim over the Islamic world, God, at the crescendo of this 50 hours of prayer and worship, declaring your sovereignty, your dominion, your majesty, God, your supremacy over every other name, God. Mm. We just speak to the gates of Islam, God, to the gates of darkness that contend and against you lord and keep your people blind and captive we say open up you ancient gates <laughs> swing wide you everlasting doors because the king of glory is about to come in coming in majesty coming in power 
coming in his beauty to set the captives free, to open the blind eyes, to heal broken lives, and to be exalted as our Savior. Open up, you ancient gates. Swing wide, you everlasting doors, for the King of glory is coming in. In the power of Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
I just um, sense a canopy of peace uh, coming down over us all. And it's a great way to enter into a Shabbat rest. Thank you all. Yep. We'll be back um, Monday morning, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time, Sunday evening here in the North America for the prophetic school again. But may God bless you and give you deep, surrendered rest <laughs> <laughs> we can sleep and now is of prayer, thank you so much for just being a, a real guard through this whole 50 hours we love you, Fred, so you then, yes then we can sleep now 50 hours <laughs> <laughs> great thank you esther all right everybody we love you john and una Great job. We are so thankful for you. What a great, great hour we just had. And uh, we are so thankful to be able to share in the Shabbat with, um, the, with the Global Watch, with everyone from around the world. It's just a special family time. And it is, again, it's my favorite part of the week. So everybody unmute yourselves. Say Shabbat Shalom. It's great to see you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.